friends welcome to the tutorial series on JS from software testing help as part of the agenda we will see how you can mock functions using JEST. we will create a sample application under test using node with two functions having dependency we will illustrate what are JEST mock and what are JEST spies let's try understanding it with the help of this diagram you can see a function 1 that calls function 2 when we are writing test for function 1 and suppose we want to stub the response from function 2 we can use a stub function 2 instead of the original implementation of the real function and with the help of this diagram you should also understand that this function 2 is suppose a very complex piece of logic which is not important when we are writing tests for function 1 so all that someone would be interested in is the function 2 got executed and returned some value so that's why the concept of mocks and stubs comes in handy. Let's get started. So in order to do that, I'll create a node package here or npm module. And that's really simple. You can just create a directory of your choice. Just mock functions. And I'll say npm in it. This is just to initialize a package as node package and if we open this is this in any editor like Visual Studio Code, you will see a simple package.json file being created which is nothing but a config file for node. So now let's add dependencies here. I'll say npm install save dev just because just is the test runner that we are going to use and I'll also update the test script to just watch all because we want to use just as a script runner so while the just module is uh, installing I'll create two directories here source and test And these are nothing but to logically separate your dev and test code. I'll create a file named app.js which will be our application under test. And in test, I'll create a file named app.js.js. And this dot test is required to ensure that when just test runner tries to find any test files, it can see this dot uh, test and know that this file contains some test. So here in this uh, application in the test, we'll have functions, function one and two, with function one calling function two. Okay, so it, it's nothing but a simple JavaScript file, and uh, we are using a greet function, which takes two parameters and returns hello first name and last name. To make it a little more complex, we'll just use another function. Suppose its name is get full name, first name and last name. And let's let me write get full name function here. And what it does is return. first name and last name separated by a space so that's our application under test two functions greet and get full name if I run or execute greet it will call get full name which will return me first name and last name separated by a space and finally I need to export this in order to call them in uh, test so that's our application under this. Now let's move to our test file. As we know that all the test tests begin with describe block. And this is nothing but our test suite. I'll just name it as illustrated mocks and spies. And let's uh, create two dummy test.
illustrate Knox and I will simply say here arrange act and assert to make it easier to understand from people coming from unit testing background and I will say illustrate spies. So now here I will say const greater equal to require app.js. This is our application under test. Let's try running this first and see if our setup works correctly. I will say const and result equal to greater dot greet. And I will say names as say Aman Kumar. And say console dot log result. So now I will expect on the screen to be printed as hello Aman Kumar. I will say npm test. And if you run this, you will see. Probably we did not save it. Console dot log result. We printed it as string. And you can see it's printing as hello Aman Kumar, which is nothing but the full execution of this with two parameters. Now let's introduce the concept of mock here. I am using the just mock syntax with const mock just dot function and I'll say mock return value this is another chain function from just mock and I'll say suppose mocked name now what it will do is it will go to this if you look at the execution when it calls this get full name method instead of taking the original parameters it will still pass but return the value as mock use mock name or mock user. So if I see the result here, just save and run it. It will say hello Man Kumar. Probably we need to revisit it. Yeah so now at this point in time it still does not know whether it should mock the get full name method or not. In order to do that, you need to use this test object that you created and assign this get full name method to mock. Let's try running this now and you can see that the output now is hello mock name instead of hello man kumar. So and that's coming because we have set the return value to be mock name and that's how you can use mocks. So this was just a simple method. Had it been a 300 line function which did some complex logic and returned a true or false, you could simply mock the return value as true and false and validate other different scenarios for the function that is under test. Now let's try to see what, what are the matches that you can use. So I can say expect result to be Hello, mocked name. We can also assert whether the mock was called or not. So I'll say mock to have been called. So these are different matches that are available in JS. And typically with mocks, what we want is we want to ascertain that the mock was called, and probably we can also ascertain to have been called times one. That means that it was just called one time. Let's try running this and see if it passes. Okay, it's giving some error. It says to have been called. Probably some typing mistake. Yeah, to have been called times. And we can see that this test is now passing, which means that the mock was called and it was called once, and the result was hello mock name. So that's how you can use the concept of mocks using jest. Now let's see how you can use uh, spies using jest. And what are spies? The so spy is nothing but it will 
still allow the real function to be called but it will just control or spy on the method call and see things like what are the arguments it was called with things like that so we'll use some of the code from here okay now i'll create a concept by probably greater spy is the name and the syntax is just dot spy on and i'll say greater object get full name method so the syntax is spy on this test object and the method name is this so now what it will do is whenever this method from on this object will be called it will basically keep monitoring what's happening there what are the arguments it was called and things like that so again in act will call the actual method and in assert now the output here will still be hello aman kumar but we could have more control in terms of whether that method was called or not whether it was just a plain return value so i can just say expect greater spy to have been called of course let's print the result and let's also write one more expect here which will check what arguments the function was called now since we have passed aman and kumar as the output input to this function greet and we know when it calls the get full name method it still calls with first name and last name so we need can check here that it was called with two arguments named aman and kumar let's try running this and we can see that this test is passed it says hello aman kumar which is the result and both the arguments are now passing so let's say suppose i change this argument it say amar i'll do amar instead of aman and run it so it says that the spy has failed because it expects amar but it received aman so that's where the importance of spy lies wherein we want the original method to execute but we want to have control on that method in terms of what were the actual arguments it was called with etc and how many times it was called so that's the major difference between box and spy and these comes in handy when you have really complex functions to test which are dependent on each other and box make life easier in order to do that kind of testing so that's it for this tutorial thank you